<laughs> what a smart boy you are, Tom. <laughs> my man, my God, it's been like five years more. 2013. 2013? Yes. <laughs> Seven years, bro. Seven. Wonderful. You are the happiest person, happiest soul I've ever seen, Tom. And you are, uh, before you speak, your energy speaks. So oh. from heart and spirit, you operate. That is the greatness and uniqueness of you, Tom. This is great. This is great. Welcome to 25th Bold Talk episode. Today, it is an amazing day because we have a special guest from Singapore. And it's going to be an amazing session. People who are lucky are going to listen today. <laughs> and I welcome leaders and entrepreneurs who are watching this program and who are also in the Zoom. B Club is meant for an empowering, enriching entrepreneurs and leaders. This is to generate billion business insights. So we have an amazing person who can touch your heart and spirit and to shift your paradigm today. Today, I live talk with Tom Abbott, Managing Director of Soko Sales Training Singapore, selling during and after COVID times. And if at all, you need the enthusiasm required. We don't know whether we have a cure for COVID or not. Definitely, we have a cure for our business today. And he's going to be with us for next one hour. He's Managing Director of Soko Sales Training and is also managing director of AMC NPO Solutions. And his website is mentioned here. We met in 2013 when I was uh, a director in ICF Hyderabad chapter. And I think we have spent almost uh, half a day or more than, a, more than a day. And I could pick up this picture from Mr. Tom's uh, Facebook page, Facebook account. And I still remember so how much uh, uh, enthusiastic, enthusiastic he was and the same, I think he has two kids. Maybe his wife has got three kids, including him. <laughs> Very naughty and mischievous. So, and who is Tom about? When I first started my sales career, I quickly learned a very valuable lesson. He's saying this, if you are not willing to learn, no one can help you. If you are determined to learn, no one can stop you. And this value for lifelong learning is what I pass on to thousands of sales professionals every year throughout Asia Pacific and around the globe. As an author, motivation speaker and sales trainer, I challenge others to improve their sales process through a commitment to changing their approach, pushing the limits and becoming continuous lifelong learners. This is what he's saying. And he came from a, such a beautiful city called Vancouver in Canada. And he has uh, from he moved from Canada to Singapore, another city like Vancouver. In 2018, I left my hometown of Vancouver, Canada and moved to Singapore where I founded Soko Sales Training, which has won awards as the best sales training provider and best e-learning and mobile learning provider in Singapore, Malaysia and Hong Kong. I think in these COVID times, there's no better person than Mr. Tom to teach us how to do business in, in these virtual digital platforms. And he's an author, The Soho Solution, 21 Selling Strategies for Growing Your Small Business and Social Selling, 10 Essential Strategies to Prospect, Position and Present Using Social Media, and on my podcast, Selling Asia. And his experience, Managing Director, Soko Sales Training, location in Singapore. Soko Sales Training is a winner in the best sales training provider, provider categories in Singapore, Malaysia, and Hong Kong at the HR Vendors of the Year Awards. And fourth time, so he's also managing director of AMC NPO Solutions in Canada, helping non-profit organizations across Canada, and which is started by his father, I suppose. The legacy continues. So we can see the roots are there in his family. The service AMC NPO Solutions was founded in 87 by the late Thomas C. about and, uh, uh, and the architect of the complementary model of Board of Governance and service to the nation, helping non, not-for-profit organizations across Canada with bylaws and governance reviews, e-learning and virtual strategic planning sessions. Because voluntary organizations often have no formal structure and no one knows exactly what they should be doing, which leads to misalignment and makes it harder to get things done. We help executive directors and boards gain clarity and unity so they work better together as one team. He has a company of sales 
and one on the other hand he also serves which started by his father so a great human being best sales training provider category for the year in a row and the team is looking forward to an awesome 2020 together with b club we started an event called bold 2020 in one of the event after post uh, covid we want to invite to our dear friend tom about to hyderabad and he will be our chief guest uh, all the way to the singapore to hyderabad through this digital platform it's all over to you please come mr <laughs> tom Hey, well, thank you so much, Venu. It is a real honor. It's a real privilege to be here. It's great to, to see you again, my friend. It's been seven years since we first met, um, and, and I feel like this is, this is uh, just as sweet. It's just as nice, and I'm looking forward to the time when I can go back to Hyderabad and actually see you in person, you know, and uh, maybe go to a Paradise Briani. <laughs> I remember I went there seven years ago. I had their, their fish tikka and it was amazing. <laughs> so look, you know, that was a wonderful introduction. To be quite honest with you, I've never, never had such a thorough introduction ever. And I've been doing this for about 20 years. So I really appreciate you've done your research. And, uh, you know, I didn't know that you were going to take a look at our other business in Canada and just seeing my dad there, um, you know, just was, was very touching. Um, so thank you. Thank you for that. So look, um, I, I just want to welcome everybody who's here on the Zoom call and those of you who are watching live on Facebook. Thanks so much for taking some time out. I'm looking forward to sharing, you know, some of my thoughts, the experience that I've had, and also the experience of our customers of how they're succeeding during these COVID times and what's going to help you afterwards beyond these COVID times. So I don't think Venu and I have any particular, you know, uh, strict format, um, but I'm going to, you know, hand it over to him with any questions. If you all in the audience on this Zoom call now have questions, please type them in the chat. Uh, Venu can pass them on to me. I'll be more than happy to answer any of your questions. Um, and from Facebook Live as well. And yeah, I'm sure Venu is doing a whole bunch of things. So any questions from you all, I'm, I'm happy to answer. So I'll hand it back over to you, Venu. Is there any particular direction you want to go or something you want me to talk about? I'm, I'm happy to go there. Yes, I have a first question for you, uh, Tom. I have also typed in the chat. How do you see the COVID situation for people in business, marketing and sales, and how do they sell in the present times as social distancing is the order of the day? Yeah, okay, so that's a, that's a great question. That's, that's, a, that's a really tricky one. So how do I see this situation for people in business, marketing, sales? How do they sell in the present times as social distancing is the order of the day? Okay. So we're doing a lot of uh, sessions right now with sales teams around how do we sell in this environment when we can't meet face to face with people. So the short answer is you've got to get really good at social selling. So as you heard in my introduction, Venu mentioned that I've written two books on sales. One is called The Soho Solution, 21 Selling Strategies for Growing Your Small Business. Uh, the second one is called Social Selling. 10 essential strategies to prospect, position, and present using social media. So what exactly does that mean? What does that look like? Uh, I wrote that book in 2015, 2015, when most people were asking, well, what exactly is social selling? And is it just a fad? Will it go away? Who's going to sell using social media? Isn't that just for sharing cat videos and, and baby photos? No, social media is not just social, but it's also selling. So it's how do you use social media to sell? So the, the, what businesses need to do right now is they need to fully embrace social media. They need to, to, to use social media as a prospecting tool. So you've got to be hunting. So, so many people out there, you know, maybe you work for a big company with big marketing budgets. Well, good for you. You can get a lot of brand awareness but there's not a lot of inbound inquiries for a lot of people right now. Maybe you run a small business, you know, maybe you're in construction or you're a builder or you're just, you know, an entrepreneur, you run, run your own small business. You don't have people coming knocking on your door. So you need to get out there and hunt and prospect for leads. This is where we're at right now. People have to be more aggressive. They have to move from, from passive to proactive in their, in their sales process. So social media is going to be a big one. So I can go in depth later on, but to answer that first question, um, the way I, I see selling in the present time and then beyond 
is you've got to have this digital mindset and be open to selling online. You've got to be open to um, generating leads online, prospecting, hunting for people, going on LinkedIn, for example, and doing advanced searches on companies, roles, titles, um, specific departments, and then start reaching out to those people, connecting on LinkedIn, and then also um, putting them in some sort of a sequence. So I can go deeper into that later, but you've got to start getting really good at prospecting using social media, really good at, at um, positioning yourself. So you've got to be really good at sharing, whether it's videos or blog posts or, or articles and tips and, and slides and infographics. You've got to get really good at sharing content on social that positions you as an authority, that positions you as the number one logical choice in your space. And then third, you've got to be good at using social media to actually present, whether it's doing videos like this, whether it's doing a, a demo, a demonstration of your product or service. Um, you've got to be really good at asking for the sale, reading body language. So the great thing about Zoom is you can actually see people. So it's not the same as face-to-face, -face, but it sure is better than the telephone. You can actually see people. You can gauge their body language. Um, are they smiling? Are they nodding their heads? Or are they leaning back a little bit, frowning with their arms crossed? So you can see what's going on with your prospect through video. So really social selling hasn't um, replaced conventional selling, but it's really enhanced it. It's evolved it and taken it to the next level. So you all, we all need to get better at social selling and that's what's gonna help us now and in the future. So I can say more later, but I think that's enough for that one question. I hope that was helpful. <laughs> thank you, thank you so much. So we have one more question here for you. So. This is uh, what message you give it to business owners and entrepreneurs on how to go ahead with the new marketing strategy because this is going to stay. We have no vaccine yet for COVID and this is going to be new normal. So the same strategies will work or should they have a digital platform or what new strategies for selling because the habits will not go so easily that meeting customer physically, but customers may not like anymore meeting physically. Uh, and then you 50% uh, to 60% you have to use these digital platforms. So what new strategies required to convert uh, mostly into digital or is there any other strategy you can propose uh, dear Tom? Yeah, so thanks Venu, that, that, that's a great question. And this is the question that everybody should be asking is what's next? Where do I go from here and what am I supposed to do next? So is it conventional, digital or a blend of both? Well, the answer is a blend of both, right? So what we recommend customers do is they, they adopt, you know, what, what is known as an omni-channel approach to sales and marketing, omni-channel. So that means multiple channels, multiple touch points. So back in the day, you know, I was just on a podcast um, a couple days ago uh, talking about outbound sales and field sales and how those sales reps are used to going out in the field and meeting with customers face to face, whether it's in their office or a trade show or a conference. That's, that's the way that they're built. That's how they sell. But now they can't do that anymore. So they have to change things up a little bit. So you need to take an omni-channel approach. What does that look like? Um, you know, conventional marketing. Well, what's conventional? So you have to have a blend of cold calls or warm calls with the phone. You've got to use email. You've got to use LinkedIn. You've got to use WhatsApp or whatever messaging platform you use. Um, you've got to use possibly Facebook as well. You've got to use Zoom to present. You've got to use a whole bunch. So now more than ever, now more than ever, sales professionals and business owners are faced with a huge technology stack, okay? 20 years ago, it was easier to sell. You would just go out and just, you know, hey, everybody, I'm over here, right? Or you could hand out some flyers or post something or hand out some name cards and, and maybe, you know, you'd get some business and, and some, some referral people would come around and, 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 and it would spread the word about you. Now, all of that stuff is still useful, but you, you reach fewer people. Look, your customers now are online. They're online right now looking for solutions to their challenges. 89% of all purchases start with an online search. 
89% of all purchases start with an online search. Think about it. The last time you bought something, you probably went online first and did some research, right? We always Google stuff to find out, right? We're looking at reviews and recommendations and we hop on Amazon or any, any of these websites. So we start with an online search. So look, that's where your customers are. If you're not where, if you're not there, if they can't find you, you won't close deals. So, I mean, you've got to go all in with digital, uh, whether it's digital marketing, like digital ads, content marketing. So I can say more later, but content marketing with content creation, blog posts, articles, videos, slide decks. So you got to go all in with content to position you as an authority. Um, and then you've also got to go all in with, let's say ads, whether it's Facebook ads or Google ads to drive traffic to your website. So important. So the world has changed and it's changed because the way customers buy has changed. So the way you sell has to change. Nothing's ever going to take away the phone, but let's face it. You use this for more than phone calls. You rarely use it for phone calls, right? You're using it for countless other applications. So you've got to be 100% on board with, uh, with digital um, and, and it's, a, it's a blend and they work well together. You, you hit someone up, you know, someone sees your Facebook ad, they click on your website, then they download uh, an opt-in form. You get their email address and phone number. So you hit them up with either an automated email sequence or a personalized email requesting a call. You hop on the phone and then you schedule maybe a live demo where you can talk them through your product in more detail using Zoom. I mean, you've already hit maybe five or six different mediums just to close that deal. So that's a great question. And, it, and the answer is, it's a blend of both, mostly digital. <laughs> Wonderful. Uh, thank you, Tom. So uh, you have been such a visionary. Before the COVID, you have imagined that social media is going to be a platform uh, to meet customers, not only to meet customers, but also to sell. And today, 89% sales happens through online. They, they do research how true it is. And thank you so much. It, it is worldwide. It's not just in Singapore, not just in Canada, but it is everywhere on the planet, isn't it, uh, uh, Tom? A hundred percent. And one, yeah. one other thing I want to add there, Venu, is 89% yeah. of all purchases start with an online search. Now, for those of you who go, oh, okay, well, maybe that's just B to, B to C, consumer, uh-uh. 75% of that is B2B. Wow. So wow. 75% of B2B purchases start with an online search. So look, your customers are looking for you 24-7, 365. Can they find you? Wonderful. <laughs> so now I, now I understand that uh, out of sight and out of mind. And whenever I open LinkedIn, I see Tom some first. <laughs> No, I understand that how short videos make the difference. Beautiful. So I just want to ask you, uh, Tom, that our salespeople are special. They are born with some qualities. Uh, like uh, some leaders are born, are made. This question is always there. Similarly, the sales, uh, they are born. This quality can be learned or acquired, or they should have some natural intelligences. So now who should sell? Only salespeople should sell. Or everybody should learn the sales. What is the new way of selling? So is there any strategies being changed? Uh, that's in my question here is what sales for people uh, who can or should sell the products or services? What special qualities required to sell? What are the three important, most important qualities uh, are necessary in, in succeeding? Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. And first of all, I want to thank all of you who are on this, this, this call right now. Um, whether you're on Facebook Live or you're here in the Zoom chat, you're, you're on the Zoom call. Um, it's great to have you here and I'm glad you're asking all these questions because I love talking about everything sales. So you guys have made my day. I mean, I love this. So thank you. I really appreciate it. Um, okay. Look, there's a couple of questions there. So let me answer that. So Venu, you said, hey, Tom, what are the three qualities people need? I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you seven. Wonderful. Wonderful. Okay. Great. There are seven qualities that you need. And uh, I break it down like this. It's seven qualities for selling. S-E-L-L-I-N-G. Okay? Oh. So if you want to be good at selling, there are seven qualities. So let me run through them. The first one is you have to be solution focused. All right? Especially now. If you're trying to sell during COVID times, 
you have to sell what's most important to customers. So you have to be solution focused. So you have to find out, okay, what's their biggest problem? What's the biggest challenge they're facing right now? And do I have the answer to that question? Do I have the solution to that problem? Can I articulate that to my customer? So now more than ever, look, I hear some people saying, I hear this, it drives me crazy. How do you sell when nobody's buying? A lot of people are buying. What are you talking about? How many of you on this call didn't buy anything since COVID started? That's preposterous. There are things, obviously we're buying things. Some things we buy more of, some we buy less of, but we're still buying, all right? So a lot of people are buying right now. We, you know, we, we, we're buying all the time. I, I, I feel like we're spending more now than before. I don't know what's going on, okay? But we're, and I, I'm working from home, but I'm busier than ever. What's happening? What's happening, all right? So everybody's, you know, people are buying. So that's a myth, but they're only buying things that they feel will solve a problem. They're buying things that are important to them that will help them reach their goals. Consumers and also businesses. You can sell to businesses now. Now some budgets are shrinking and some are being reallocated and some are putting things on hold. That's true for some, but any business that operates needs things to operate, all right? So in our business, we need stuff. Right? We have to purchase things, otherwise our business will shut down. There are certain things that you need to operate, whether it's computers, laptops, modems, routers, lights, microphones, phones. There's technology stuff. So if you're in tech, you need it. Zoom is doing great right now. Netflix is doing great right now. Groceries and delivery services are doing great right now. If you're a restaurant, you need to pivot from sit down restaurant right to to take away and delivery. So look, I'm getting off track a little bit, but you know, you talk about Darwinism and people always say that Darwinism is, is survival of the fittest. Well, they're wrong. It's not about being fit. It's those who adapt. Species that adapt will survive. So you need to adapt in your business and change things up, okay? So look, you gotta be solution focused. What's most important to your customer? The E in selling is ethical. You've gotta be ethical. These are the traits that I look for when I hire people to join my sales team. They've got to be ethical. What does that mean? Honest, fair, truthful, full disclosure to customers. They act in the best interest of their customers, not themselves. They're not doing it for their quota. They're doing it for their customers. That's really important so that they'll be trusted by their customers. So you've got to have this baseline of ethics. Now, ethics can't be trained or taught. I'm sorry. Ethics can't be learned. You either are ethical or you're not. So if you want to succeed in sales in the long term, you need to be ethical. Now, it, look, there's a lot of unethical people in sales. They don't last long. They're liars, cheats, swindlers, snake oil salesmen, and they don't last. They have to run from town to town, industry to industry, job to job, and hope that their past doesn't catch up with them. I don't want you to be those people, and I know that no one here on this call is. You're all ethical, all right? But that's, that's what you need to look for when you're hiring sales reps. Uh, next is you gotta be a good learner. So the first L in selling is a learner. You've gotta be willing to learn new things. You can't be someone that is just so, um, you know, hey, it's my way or the highway, or, I've been doing sales for 20 years, so what are you gonna teach me? Oh, well, excuse me. I mean, come on, everybody can learn. I've written books on sales, uh, we're a market leader in APAC. I still listen to podcasts on sales, read books, watch videos, because I always wanna be learning. I'm a lifelong learner, are you? So the most successful salespeople and business owners are lifelong learners. I always tell people, learners, are earners. The more you learn, the more you will earn. You become resourceful, knowledgeable. You can do things that you couldn't do before and you're more valuable to your customers. So the first is solution focused, the second is ethical, and the third is you've gotta be a learner because learners are earners, all right? So hire people that are willing to learn. 
Don't hire people that think they know it all. They will never learn. You know, there's that expression, you can't teach an old dog new tricks. <laughs> now, it's not saying that old people can't learn, but do they have an old mindset? That's the thing. Do they have an old mindset or do they have a learner's mindset, a, a beginner's mindset? Hire people with a beginner's mindset. So that's learners. Uh, the fourth tip is you've got to be a good listener. Listener, all right? You've got to be the kind of person that asks a lot of questions. You've got to be curious. I'm always telling the folks on my sales team, ask more questions. Ask them why, what, how, who, when, where. Be genuinely curious about your customers. Don't take anything they say at face value. Sometimes you have to challenge a little bit. You've got to push back. You've got to clarify. But you've got to ask a lot of questions. So there's this 80-10-10 rule that I have for sales. It's an 80-10-10 rule. You need to listen 80% of the time to customers. You listen 80% of the time. Then 10% of the time, you're asking questions. What do you need? Why do you need it? How do you need it? What have you tried before? What's worked? What hasn't? What goals do you want to achieve? Um, you know, what have you invested in the past? How much is it costing you to not solve this problem? Blah, blah, blah. 10% is asking questions, 80% is listening, and then that leaves 10%. That 10% is for selling. All you need, all you need is 10%. And 10% of talking, if you've asked the right questions, if you've asked the right questions and you've listened, then it's easy to propose the solution. All right, so it's an 80, 10, 10 rule. So that's being a good listener. That's now, being a good listener. Now, <laughs> we got an echo somewhere. So the, <laughs> we got an echo somewhere. Okay, so, maybe someone, we can, we can mute all just to make sure I don't hear myself <laughs> twice. <laughs> 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 yeah, if you breathe off. Yeah, I think okay. I, I'll, I'll mute myself. Yes. Okay. okay, perfect. Thank you so much. Uh, any questions you have for me, please type them in the chat. More than happy to answer, right, guys? So I'll, I'll, let me wrap up this question. Uh, so the I in selling is industrious. Industrious. Hardworking, productive, diligent, thorough, conscientious. You know what I'm saying? That is industrious. So you've got to be a hard worker. Look, a lot of people, you hear this expression. You hear this expression today. Ooh, I don't work hard. I work smart. <laughs> I think that's ridiculous. Any successful person you've ever met or talked to, uh, yes, yes, they work smart. Of course they work smart. And they darn well work hard. You trying to tell me that, that Warren Buffett, Jack Ma, you trying to tell me that these guys, right, the founders of Tata, you're trying to tell me that these guys never worked hard? Darn right they worked hard. So you have to work hard and work smart. Don't think that you can take shortcuts and cut corners and just work a two hour day. All right, I work very smart and I also work very hard. All right, so you gotta work hard, that's the key. So you gotta be industrious. And then the last two, the N in selling is neighborly. You've got to be friendly, outgoing, positive, helpful, useful to customers. You got to smile. People, people like people like them, right? So you've got to be approachable. Nobody wants to work with a jerk. Nobody wants to work with someone who's not fun to work with. So if all things are equal and you've got two equally skilled people and one person is, 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 is neighborly, friendly, helpful, thoughtful, this person will win every single time. And then finally, the G in selling is goal-oriented. You've gotta be goal-oriented. Top salespeople are always focused on a goal. They've got a target, they've got KPIs, they're looking at it, they're looking at how many calls did I make, how many calls did I schedule, how many demos or presentations did, did I run. Uh, they're looking at their sales targets and their actual, they're always obsessed about the numbers. They focus on goals, whether it's revenue, 
um, market share, market penetration, profitability, whether it's conversion rate, they're always looking at the numbers. Customer acquisition, they're goal oriented. So the more goal oriented you are, the more successful you're gonna be in sales. So that's the seven keys to selling. Solution focused, ethical, learners, listeners, industrious, neighborly, and goal oriented. <laughs> Wow, what an answer, uh, Tom. So I think this acronym can be remembered uh, forever. I think you have, in one nutshell, you have given the whole concept of uh, sales. Thank you so much, uh, uh, Tom, for the answer. So I would like to ask you that you are a wonderful speaker, wonderful coach, uh, and a trainer, and you are in an award-winning company. You have. So how does coaching or training helps a salesperson or a company or an organization to their sales. So what strategies they learn? So how important it is in okay, so the sales of an entity market? That's a great okay. question, Venu. So that's let, let me, question, okay, so, there's still a bit of echo. So maybe uh, we, can, we can mute okay, everybody uh, for the moment. All right. So. There was an earlier question that I, I didn't address that I want to answer real quick. Uh, the, the question was, you know, who are the salespeople? You know, uh, you know, who, who can or should sell products or services, right? So I talked about the seven qualities that you need to succeed in sales. Uh, but to that question about who should be selling, in this period, it should be everybody. All right? In this period right now, all hands on deck. Everybody in your organization is in sales. Everybody off. No one's been retrenched. No one has been downsized, right-sized, laid off. No one's even taken less hours or less pay. Because we shifted our focus and we said, look, every single person here needs to have some sort of a sales role. So maybe you used to be doing mostly content creation and curriculum. Now I need you to help me with the sales. Okay? Or you were doing more website stuff. Now we need to help you. I need you to help me book appointments. Okay. So you, it's all hands on deck, baby. All hands on deck. You, so everybody's in sales. Anybody that touches a customer, that talks to a customer, they have to have this mindset that they're in sales. So that's number one. All right. So I hope that helps. So everybody's got to be selling right now. Wonderful, right. Tom. That, that's a great uh, message because uh, sales is not just meant for a department in an organization. That everybody, including the owner of an organization, must learn. And it's, it's a process. Everybody should generate sales. That, that is a new norm, a new, a and new the lead, and, and the business owner needs to be leading it. The business owner has to lead by example. How can I tell my troops? How can I tell my team what they should be doing, but I'm not willing to do it myself? All right, that's a no-no, right? You've got to be willing to step up and, and lead by example and say, hey, this is how we do it. So I always want to be an inspiration to my team and show them that it's possible. Every time I close a deal, I share it in our group chat. We use Slack and I go, I just closed this deal and we did it together as a team. We all supported each other. No man is an island. Everybody helps at some point. So it creates this, this feeling of like, we're all in this together. And I think that's so important right now. So there was a question someone asked about, um, uh, does coaching or training help in sales? A hundred percent. I mean, that's indisputable. So now coaching and training are not the same thing. And I know that Venu will appreciate this as a fellow ICF coach. So training is the imparting of knowledge, the imparting of skill. It's basically going, here's how to do something. Here's how to do something. Let me show you how to do something. And that's tremendously useful because a lot of people, as you can see from our sales training program, a lot of people, they don't know how to manage. They don't know how to lead. They don't know how to have the right attitude. They don't know how to present, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So we need to teach them how and give them the skills to do it. That's teaching. That's training. And that works, of course, especially if you reinforce it. Now, how do you reinforce it? Through coaching. Coaching, coaching is partnering with someone to inspire them to maximize their potential, all right? So roughly that's the definition of coaching. So it's partnering with someone 
to get them to think differently and to try new things to maximize their potential. So what do I, what do I mean by that? I could teach you how to qualify leads effectively. Okay, you use a framework like BANT, budget, authority, need, and timeline, and you need to ask these types of questions. That's training, and we could practice it. But then the coaching picks up where training leaves off. That's where we would follow up with the coachee, with the sales rep, and go, okay, tell me, how did last week go? Did you ask these qualifying questions? How did it work for you? Which ones did you ask and, and why? Which ones did you not ask? Why didn't you ask those ones? What was their response when you asked them? And then how did you respond to their response? And then you can give them a few tips or why don't you try this on for size? Or maybe next time you could try that. And then you set them with clear goals to hold them accountable. Okay, by next week, I want you to ask at least three qualifying questions for every inquiry you talk to. You set a goal. And then the following week you follow up by asking them, how did you do? What's better since last week? So th this is just a very simple example of how to coach and the distinction between training and coaching. But at the end of the day, people need to know how to do something. So training is critical, whether it's on the job, whether it's internal or whether it's external and working with the training company with an e-learning platform like we do. All of you guys could sign up for SoCo Academy. You just go on socoacademy.com and you can even sign up for like $9 just to get you started with our e-learning platform. That way you start learning. Then if you need coaching, then you can talk to us about maybe engaging us to coach you and work with you and hold your hand week in, week out to make sure that you consistently adopt these desired selling behaviors. That's coaching and it works. All right, what's next? <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> so just for $9 so they can... Uh... Join with you and learn in your website, Soko Sales, isn't it, uh, Tom? It's SokoAcademy.com. Let me just, th I'm going to throw the link in for you guys. Please, you can just please, please, uh, there. so that everybody can see that. I'm going to put this in the, in, the, in the chat here. So I hope everybody on Facebook can see it. Yes, you can also share any slide. Uh, 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 you are a co-host, Tom, so you can also share your presentation if there's anything like that. Well, yeah, sure. Look, you can of just- Of course, uh, you are smarter than your presentation, so you would like to see you. <laughs> but look, so let me, yeah, let me just- let I me, can let... see that. I will also share in Facebook page this particular uh, uh, website link. Thank you so much for that. You're most welcome. So, you know, I'm just sharing real quick here. If you go on socoacademy.com slash join now, uh, this gives you access to our sales accelerator program. You'll get a quick demo video here, an explainer video about what the e-learning platform is all about. And you just join now for $9. You get like a month's access to over 100 videos for only $9 to start. So it gives you examples of all the different courses that we cover, a little bit about, about my background and, and what you're going to learn in this program, what some participants are saying, what are some of the key topics that are covered in SoCo Academy. And then you just click here, join now for $9 and you're good to go. So it's just a really great offer and a great way for you to start learning how to sell. Love it. <laughs> now I understand that you are a leader by example. See, you are, we are talking about sales and now we are selling. <laughs> I couldn't help it. Someone asked, so I had, to, I had to answer. I asked, I asked intentionally my dear friends so that people get the demonstration of what sales is uh, from you. Because uh, like uh, uh, a cricket, uh, the captain has to be an example. He cannot say that I'll make everybody play, but I will not play. So someone, Mr. Gopi is questioning that from then doorman to chairman, everybody has to sell, he's asking us. So what do you say that uh, everybody is a salesman from a security to, from an office boy to, from, uh, from a, a account staff or finance staff to the chairman, everybody should sell. That's what you mean, isn't it, Mr. Tom? Everybody has to sell. Look, when you walk into a store, all right, when you walk into a store, for example, and uh, every single person, every single person that you see that works there is an ambassador of the store. They're all in sales. And the experience you have with each one of those people defines your experience you have with that company overall. So if you see someone that's unfriendly, they're not helpful, if you say, hey, um, where can I find the rice? Where can I find uh, the bread? And they go, I don't know. Or, I don't know, somewhere over there. 
that, 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 that forms your impression of that company and has an impact on sales. But if that same person said, oh, I, I'm happy to show you, um, what are you making tonight? What kind of dish are you making with the rice? Oh, you're making um, you know, butter chicken. Oh, that's great. Or chicken tikka, perfect. Why don't I show you where the chicken is? Or why don't I show you some of the different spices and herbs? They can start selling. They can start selling because they're focusing on the solution, which is the first thing, the S, right? So everybody's in sales. And it, look, even, man, even someone who's in accounting, if you're in accounting and you follow up with one of your customers around an invoice, you can even explain the invoice to them a little bit and go, yep, so this is for 100 units. Now, before I send this off to you, um, we, we do a, a special offer right now where if you get 200 units, you get 10% off. Do you want to up your order? Can you imagine if someone in accounting did that? But most people in accounting just see themselves as paper pushers, paper pushers. But every single person can be in sales. The person answering your phone is the first person that any, any customer talks to. They need sales training. Everybody is in sales. It's just that simple. Wonderful, Tom. What I understand is in these COVID times, uh, instead of, uh, uh, I mean, the, the, everything job is at stake. So the people should not say that I only do this work and it, they can do this and, 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 and sales. So that uh, they're more dynamic and they're, uh, they become asset to the organization and they're recession free and their job will never be at uh, uh, a risk, isn't it, uh, Tom? Yeah, th think about it. If you have a company and you've got 10 people on your staff, let's say, who are the first people to go? It's the people who either are the most expensive or they're a cost center. You understand? They're a cost center, as in they're a monthly fixed cost. It doesn't matter if I'm closing deals or not. They're just always there draining money. Now there's a cost of doing business, but the business has to be there. Who are the last people to go? Salespeople. Because sales is the number one department that actually brings in revenue. It's just that simple. And don't let anybody tell you different. Salespeople are awesome because we are the lifeblood of every single company. If you were to fire your whole sales team tomorrow, good luck with that. Good luck with that. All right? You get rid of people in admin or operations. You could survive for quite a few months. You really could. I'm not saying it would be easy, but you could survive. You get rid of your marketing department. Well, you, you know, that can last a little while, but they bring in some leads. So they're, they're next behind sales. <laughs> okay? They're next behind sales. But your salespeople, they're number one. Why? Because they are a profit center, or they should be. They should be. If you've got some sales reps that are getting too high a base salary and the commission is too low, they're not interested and they don't sell, get rid of them. You should only have salespeople on your team that are hungry and they, they don't care about the base. They don't care about the base. They're like, ah, oh, forget the base. What are my potential commissions if I close deals? How much can I make in this company? I have not hired people because they- I have not hired people because they- They pushed back to me because they only were- They only- I, I'm on- Because they only were- they only, I'm on, there's some feedback here. Maybe we can put someone on mute, all right? I, I've, I've told people, look, I've pushed, they've pushed back because they wanted a higher base. I said, why are we talking about your base? I'm showing you how much money you can make because this is how much we've been making. If you're a good salesperson, you should be exceeding this. You should be exceeding this if you're good and you won't care at all about the base. You'll just be living off this beautiful commission. These are the kinds of people that you want on your team. So salespeople to me are number one, followed by marketing and then everybody else. But it starts at the top and the bosses have to sell too. <laughs> Wonderful message. Uh, uh, and now I, I feel that uh, 
and even I must take my sales then now. <laughs> I must start selling because uh, I'm not just being a coach, maybe I, I, now I'm a sales coach. So I help uh, selling, I think that is the way uh, we are more demand now, so. Well, here's yes, the thing, I have a question. Here's, here's a, uh, Venu, uh, let, me just, here's a, let me just share something real quick, Venu. There's a lot of people like that. Please, of, please go ahead. There's a lot of business people on this call right now. There's a lot of business people on this Facebook Live, on this webinar, who are really, really good at what they do. Like they're really good at what they do, okay? They're among the best of the best. They're really good at what they do. And a lot of them hope that the quality of their work will speak for them. That's just not true. You could be the best that you could be the best construction worker or the best business owner in Hyderabad that nobody knows about because you don't know how to market yourself and you can't sell. Sales and marketing are the two most important assets that you need to run a successful business, period. Okay, back over to you, Venu. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you, Tom. So now I have, there's a question from a participant, Chandraleka. Sir, can you please address this? What is the kind of role of sales in hospitality or service sector, especially yoga impact on it during COVID times and how to use sales to move forward in this sector? This is hospitality, especially in yoga, she's asking. So hospitality and yoga are two very different things. <laughs> so yeah. Yes. So let me let me answer let me answer them both uh, yes. uh, separately. Okay. <laughs> okay. I've never heard a question framed like that. How do you succeed in hospitality and yoga? Okay. Yeah, I think uh, she must be uh, a kind of a therapist. She has got a yoga center and also uh, a, a kind of a therapy center. So she has to receive maybe the hospitality is kind of a service. Maybe her uh, what does uh, it mean is service sector. So we okay. can consider like this. So let me, let me, so let me just, let me, let me talk quickly about hotels, hospitality, and then I'm going to talk about yoga. All right. <laughs> so here's the thing with, with hotels. Um, in Singapore, for example, and around the world, let's just say, let me just use a blanket statement. COVID has devastated the hotel industry. Let me just say that. Okay. It's been, it's been devastating. I, I was going to say challenging, but the word challenging doesn't do it justice. It's been devastating for hospitality. People aren't going to hotels. People aren't flying on planes. They're not traveling. They're not vacationing, nothing. So it's been, it's been devastating. Do you know how many emails and phone calls I've gotten or LinkedIn messages I've gotten from people in hospitality in the last three months? Venu, can you guess how many? So maybe a, a 20? 20? Yeah. <laughs> More than that? No, one. One, okay. I don't mean higher. <laughs> no, I mean I've only had one. Oh. In the past three months, I've gotten one salesperson from hospitality reach out to me. Now, maybe you're saying, but Tom, what are they going to sell you right now? You're not going to go to their hotel. It doesn't matter. It's about filling your pipeline. It's filling your pipeline now so that in one, two, or three months, you've got bookings. You've got leads that you can go back to. You can nurture this relationship for the next two or three months. Things don't happen overnight. You've got to build it over time. This is the perfect time for brand building and positioning because nobody's doing it right now. Facebook ads, Google ads are so cheap right now because people are, they're not marketing as much right now. I don't know why, but like Warren Buffett says, I love this quote, when people are greedy, be cautious. When people are cautious, be greedy. So if everybody's cautious right now and they're not spending money on sales and marketing activities, that's exactly what you need to do right now because it's, it's never been more affordable or than now. Well, I can hear myself on Facebook Live, I think, with the, with the people, right? But here's the thing. Um, so hospitality, 
they need to be doubling down on their sales and marketing activity to at least touch with their customers and build some pipeline for the next few months. So that's hospitality. They need to be doing that. That's just one idea that they should do. Now let's move on to yoga. Now a yoga business, for example, should be doing the same thing. If you have a yoga studio, you should be reaching out to your, your customers, checking in with them, letting them know that you're still here, maybe have some post COVID specials or promotions that you could offer them once you're open again and back to business to try to get some loyalty. So people come to you. That's so important. All right. What else do you need to do uh, with, with the yoga studio videos, man, online, YouTube, get some subscribers, sell some product, this is the perfect time to maybe have a, a yoga YouTube channel and, and build up your subscriber base. Get on Facebook Live and do videos like we're doing right now, doing some poses, have a Facebook watch party. I don't know. There's a lot of things that you could be doing right now. If, if I had a yoga studio, the first thing I would do is I'd start, and I, I'm not a yogi, but I would um, start, start recording videos and I'd, put them on, I'd start a, um, a channel and I'd start selling some of these videos, how to do it at home, right? Build us some subscribers. You can still make money now, but build your brand and your following now. Wonderful, but I could see a lot of yoga poses and I can see on stage. I think no one can put the kind of poses and the, the kind of energy show. How do you maintain this energy, Tom? So what is the secret of it? And how important the energy, this enthusiasm for, sale, for sales or anybody, especially in this COVID times, what is your secret? Please tell us. You guys, I, my secret is I'm passionate about what I do, okay? I, I probably have more passion now than when I, when I first met Venu seven years ago in Hyderabad. I'm just a bundle of energy. I love what I do. I'm passionate about, about sales and business. You know, I'm, I'm committed to it. I'm committed to you guys. I want to answer these questions. They get me excited. They get me fired up. I want to help people around the world. So for me, it's that motivation. I remember, look, I'm a big, big believer in it's not what happens to you, it's what you do about it, all right? That expression, I love that. It's not what happens to you, it's what you do about it. So some of you on this session are gonna be feeling sorry for yourselves. Oh my God, woe is me, COVID has devastated my business, has devastated my industry. I guess I just better sit back and pray for the best, okay? So there's people that are sitting and praying and then those that are practicing people who are out there and they're trying to make something happen. Now I, I'm the kind of guy that if my business is going to fail, it's going to be because I gave it 110% and that wasn't enough, but I'm not going to sit back and roll over and just die. You're going to have to kill me. Okay, you're going to have to take it from me because I'm not going to give it to you. So I'm going to keep fighting. And I said this right from the beginning. I said to my team, I said, look, team, this is tough. We've got engagements are being canceled left, right and center because I can't speak or train live and trainings have been postponed. We managed to fight, call all of our customers that canceled and we got them all to reschedule either for post COVID or to transfer to virtual sessions. So we didn't lose any of the pre-COVID revenue that we booked from before. That was an effort that we did. And now, since we focus now, more on our e-learning, we've got a great you know, Soko e Academy and our virtual instructor-led training, we can do all the training that we did in classroom, we can do here on video and it's still as dynamic and engaging. I hope you guys are having a good time. If you are, show us some love, say yes in the chat, that say hi to Venu. Yes so if you guys are enjoying this. Yes, this uh, please show the reactions, uh, my dear friend, that you have a reaction here. Let Tom know how important it is, how much you are enjoying. You know uh, what? So that he, he can know, you, type, you can type you in the chat. If it is yeah, yes, man, I want to feel yes. you guys. He's so adding that, you know, feel you guys. Yeah, if he's adding value, please uh, uh, type in the chat box. Let my dear friend know that. Uh, I will. <laughs> so, so thank you, Chandra. Uh, thank, thank you, Chandra. Trump. I appreciate that great, thank you, Chandra. I appreciate great question from great. Chandra. I what love that. Thank you so much. And, and uh, Hari, Hari, awesome. 
So we got some great questions. So for me, look, you asked me what keeps me motivated. Like many of you, I've got a beautiful wife and two young kids. So my family keeps me motivated, all right? They rely on me, they depend on me. I can't slack off. I've got goals and hopes and dreams for myself and I've got responsibilities and obligations and dreams for my family. I'm also responsible for like seven employees of the company around the world. They depend on me to help them pay their rent, their mortgages, their medical expenses, their food, their groceries, their livelihood. If that doesn't motivate you, then I don't know what does. But you owe it to yourself and you owe it to your family, friends, and the world to keep fighting and to give it 110%. So that's what drives me every single day. Wonderful, Tom. So my best regards to Elaine and my best regards to uh, you both to two sons, Liam and Theo. The second son I did not, I, I have not yet seen. So the first son I've seen when he's in French. So beautiful to see that you are a father of two. Wonderful Thank you, Venu. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> now we have a friend, and your wife, uh, Elaine, also says hi to you in Facebook. So I want to convey that. To you. Oh, Elaine says hi. Hi, hi honey. <laughs> Very nice. Very nice. <laughs> That's the beauty. So my friend, uh, Mr. Ranga Prasad, he is an entrepreneur. Uh, he has got uh, more than 600 crore in Indian rupees revenues. In his company, he is luxury housing in other days. So he would like, and he, he uh, often comes to Singapore. Maybe in next visit, he would meet you. So I maybe hope so. Ranga, come on, will, let's go. Uh, I hope so. Ranga, come on, let's go. Ranga Prasad, please go ahead and ask your question. So, we, yeah. Hi, yeah. hi, Tom. Uh, hi, Ranga. Yeah, it's great. Uh, we had a fantastic uh, session now. We are enjoying a lot. Uh, in fact, as you told, uh, now, though I have few companies, I love sales as my first priority, and I love to sell. Uh, so I, I'm really enjoying your class. Uh, yeah, Mr. Tom, actually I had a small doubt. Because of this go COVID, what could be the impact of COVID on luxury segment of the housing? Maybe housing or anything? What could be the impact of, on the luxury segment of the uh, sectors? That's a beautiful question, man. So let, let me tell you what my thoughts are, okay? Uh, uh, Ranga, let me tell you my thoughts. The people that are hit hardest right now are not the wealthy people. It's, it's not, and it's really sad. This world, like I don't wanna get all political, man, but this world has tremendous income inequality, okay? And what happens is, the middle class seems to be getting smaller, yeah. okay? And it's like the people in the middle class have to work twice as hard just to stay where they are, okay? It's really tough out there. Uh, but the people who are higher up, um, they're doing fine, they're okay. Um, be, you look, it's a combination, look, I don't, wanna, I don't wanna sound mean, but let me just say this. If you give a poor person $10,000, they will probably be broke in a month. You give a wealthy person $10,000, they will leverage that and turn it into a million dollars because they know how to manage money and they also have connections and th there's just myriad reasons why, okay? Um, so why do I say that? I say that because the, the, the poor and the disadvantaged people are the hardest hit right now. So if you're looking at accommodation, it might even be hard to rent out some, you know, uh, lower priced accommodation because they're all feeling the crunch, they're feeling the squeeze. So maybe some of your mid-level units might be tough to, to rent or sell, and everyone goes for the lower priced ones in lesser neighborhoods, but those people that have more money with more wealth, they're doing okay. And they're still going to buy because if the market softens a little bit, those prices might go down, which makes it even more attractive to them. So look, at the end of the day, people still want to buy, but you, you, you have to make sure you have to reach a few more people. Okay. You got to work twice as hard, Ranga. You've got to get twice as many people. Um, if it took you 10 people to close one deal, you got to get 20 people to come. Okay. 
So it's going to be tougher to qualify, uh, but you got to, you know, spread that net a lot wider and just be willing to work twice as hard for the same amount of money, but it's there. Just keep at it, man. You can do it. Fantastic, Mr. Tom, because I believe the same. Um, it's fantastic answer uh, because I believe the luxury segment is the least uh, affected in this COVID. So uh, when you said that, it's really uh, good to hear that. You know, and, and, and yeah, good, cool, Ranga. And it's all about how you position it, right? If you, if you tell affluent people with more money, you say, look, guys, you will never get a price like this again. Exactly. Like, th this is it, man. This is the time to buy. It's the worst time to sell, okay? But when people don't have money, you know, lower income people that don't have money saved and they don't have investments, just to survive with cash flow, they have to sell. And that's where they lose. And then people that do have the resources, they buy at those cheap prices. So this is a great time if you're shopping, a great time if you're shopping. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Tom. My Thank pleasure, you, man. Thank you, Ranga. I'll see you in Singapore. And I also, yeah. where are you right now? Uh, I'm in Andhra Pradesh. Uh, it was a place called Rajamandri. Okay. Well, I hope to visit there someday, okay? Yeah, yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you for that. Bye. Yes, yes. When you come to India, I'll take you to his place and uh, we can see his kingdom. And Ooh. his son, also, his, both the children, his son studied in Singapore. Uh, so he uh, often visits there. So definitely we'll see you in Singapore or we'll invite you to our place. Uh, maybe once, uh, if it takes his, uh, um, I mean, if once his sales team performs well, we, we take all of them to Singapore. So hey, yeah, and maybe I'll buy something from Ranga. Maybe I'll buy something from Ranga. Thank you, sir. Thank you. But I'll tell you, thank you, thank you, Tom. Thank you. get but your I'll team you. in Soko Academy. Get your team in Soko Academy. It's like nine bucks just to get started, man. I think it's a great deal for your team. Go for it. I think it's a great deal for your team. Go for it. That's the first thing I do after this meeting. Wonderful. I love to be Good job, man. Good job. Thank Wonderful. You. Thank you. Thank you so much, Rangabhasadigaru. So, Atidhi Deva Bhava. So, he is a guest to India now. So, from Singapore. And he is... Uh, uh, he's given the time for us. It's uh, for five now. Thank you so much, Tom, for being here. And we have taken five more minutes. So now I just want to ask a question to you. Yes. That how do you see India uh, from the perspective of Singapore? Uh, uh, because you have been living in Singapore, you are born in Canada. How do you see this country uh, a, a, a advantage during this uh, geopolitical situation in the world in the, in the world today in a global economy? how India is facing this COVID uh, and in the world, how we have controlled and we have imposed lockdown. Uh, our economy is maybe hit temporarily, but human loss is not much. And we are young nation. So average age of 29 years or 30 years. And we are second largest population in the world. So with the young population, how do you see India from your perspective and for the next decade? Woo. Okay, that's a big question, man. And, and I love it. Okay, here, here we go. We're talking about one of the biggest countries in the world. And, and I'm now in like one of the smallest countries in the world, Singapore. And yet Singapore is a global powerhouse. All right. So I've got, you know, a few, a few different things that I'm going to be talking about here. But here's the thing. India is the future. All right. India is the future. All right. I've been to Hyderabad, Bangalore, Chennai, Mumbai, and I'm just scratching the surface. It's a beautiful country. And there's so much diversity there and so much intelligence and entrepreneurship. My God, you look around the world, there are very few places in the world that have the resources that India does. All right. So I believe that India is poised, poised. If you take this opportunity, if you seize this opportunity, the world is yours. So I just encourage everybody like see beyond India. Now look, Start with India first, start. I always believe you should be the biggest fish in a small pond, all right? Biggest fish, small pond. So before you have global aspirations, dominate your state or province, dominate your city. Be the number one go-to person in your space so that everybody knows your name in your space. Then you start expanding. Then you start going out a little bit to different regions, different parts of India. Then I want you to be the number one in your industry across India. Dominate it. We're talking over a billion people. That's a massive market. Go for it. Then once you've done that, now you start looking outside globally to other markets. 
all right? But look, the way the world is today, how interconnected we are with social, you can form relationships globally in a heartbeat. Look at Venu and I right now, here am I. I've done these types of sessions all around the world and now I'm live with you guys in India, all right? This is the way of the world. So India, look, you are poised, you are in the prime position to take the world by storm. You've got some wonderful success stories. You've got the, the ingenuity. India has some of the smartest people on the planet and some of the most industrious entrepreneurs on the planet, business people. You've got everything going for you. I think that's why I feel so connected to India. Every time I go there, I feel like I'm home. Now, my mother is from Trinidad, which is in the Caribbean, which is known as the West Indies. Oh. So i am got a little bit of West Indian in me. You know what I'm saying? So I feel like we're, we're brothers, we're kindred spirits. So there's something about India that really, really resonates with me. And there's, there's something about y y your, your culture that um, you've been around since the dawn of time and you will be around <laughs> until the end of time. And I think India is poised to just take the world by storm. So just keep it up, all right? Beautiful, it's very touching, uh, Tom. So your views on India and it, it has enhanced our self-esteem and pride for being an Indians and uh, having the uh, culture, universal values where we feel that uh, the whole planet is one family. Uh, and I think seven years back when our uh, selfie was posted in my Facebook, many people commented, it looks like your cousin, uh, your brother. So uh, I feel I have a twin brother in Singapore now. Thank you so much. Uh, hey, thank you. <laughs> thank you. So, before before yeah. we go, I just want to thank everyone who's been joining us on Facebook Live, uh, everyone who's joining us like now on this webinar. You know, we've got uh, Vamsi and Patnam and Yashu and Ram and uh, Lakshi and Siva. We got a whole bunch of, oh my God, I can't even go through everybody. We got Harry and uh, Gadupa and, C oh my God, we got so many folks on here right now. We got Vasmi, Chandra, Chengu, Chandra, Ragma. All of you guys um, have made this a really special evening for me. So thanks Thank for- Thank you so much. Out. Thank you so much, Tom, for being a bold guest. And it is a 25th, is the Silver Jubilee we call. And we got a gold man for this session and you <laughs> made our day. And this one session can revamp, can revive many businesses. And when the business owner and their sales team, many companies are listening with, along with their sales team in their offices, this particular session. So Mr. Inder Senaridi has just sent me a message. We are watching with our team. So imagine that if, if an organization gets the benefit of your insights and they subscribe you, the one of it with the nine dollars and they listen to you. And imagine that kind of this just something they get and the paradigm shift and they can sell. Everybody puts their effort 110 percent or 200 percent or 300 percent. They put more effort and bring the sales and the revenues come in and nobody loses the dynamic and makes the company successful. All the credit goes to you. Um, thanks for accepting my request and being here today. Thank you so much. So, pranams to you from India. Namaste to you. Thank you, Tom, so for being here and taking your 10 minutes extra. So thank you very much for accepting and being here. And our best regards to Elaine and uh, uh, Liam. Yeah, am I right in pronunciation? Liam Abbott yeah. or Theo Abbott? Yes. How do you pronounce your uh, kid's name? Uh, Liam is short for William, so it's Liam. Please. And uh, Theo, which is uh, short for Theodore. Wow. Wow. Yeah. So thank you so much, <laughs> great, you guys. Great Look, to know. Great I, to know. Would, uh, I would love to stay connected with each and every one of you. Uh, feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn. That's probably the best way that we can stay in touch. You can get our sales tips, follow up, and just get some, some news and ideas that are really going to help you take your business forward. So I look forward to connecting with you guys on LinkedIn. Thank you so much. Have a uh, good, great evening, Tom. So see then again, maybe give us time after three months to six months, once in a, a while, so that people, there will be more fans in Hyderabad than in India than in Singapore. Thank you. Right on. Thank you so much, Venu. And it's a real pleasure seeing you again, my friend. Take care, everyone. All the best to you. Much love. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. Bye.